our Facebook Live event on, what's the date today? It's the 17th of September. We've been doing this for a while now and we are back in the kitchen. But before we get to talking about what's happening in the kitchen, I've got a couple of little updates for you. So we had the news last week that we would be going down to six members in a group. We've just heard some of the exceptions and because we are a charity and it's for charitable purposes and also because um, the, the groups are support groups for our members, we could have more than six people. So the announcement from last week is slightly different. We're now onto more than six people. So if you'd like to come in, please do phone the office, make your booking and we will make sure if there is space for you to come in by transport or you're making your own way in and there's space you can come in. That's really good news. And then just a little bit of history about Freud and Vision. The fact that we've been going for nearly 100 years. It's our centenary in 2023 that we are already thinking about a little bit. And we are a charity that supports and enables people with sight loss. We change how people see. So that's changing how people look at people with sight loss and also making sure that we're changing how we look at, at the world in general and we support, enable and empower. So welcome if you are new and welcome back if you've been with us before. Today we are doing stuffed peppers and I'm sure Aisha's gonna tell us exactly what you need and exactly what you need to do. So I'm gonna hand over to the wonderful Aisha. She's gonna be very pleased to kick me out of her kitchen. <laughs> Hello, good afternoon. Welcome back to our Facebook Live. Today we're going to be cooking stuffed peppers with couscous. So our ingredient for today is one courgette, one aubergine, and the peppers you need. It depends on how many people you, you want to feed. So how many are you feeding today, Aisha? Today I've, I've got four peppers, red and orange, or yellow. I think this one is orange. But I've split them in half, so you have eight instead of four. But you can leave them whole. So this can feed, well, what, four people, because it's like two, two. Two halves each. Yeah. Or if you want to do it for like a starter, you can do like half each. Okay. Yeah. And obviously I've got my courgette, aubergine, onions and tomatoes. I think you mentioned something, uh, your favourite thing to add. I'm sure there's going to be some mixed herbs <laughs> later, isn't there, Aisha? Definitely, there's mixed herbs in there. So what we're going to do today, I'm going to show you how to chop the onions my way. Obviously, you might have your own way. For me, this is easier. I just cut the ends off, but this is what you're going to need first. So you haven't taken the skin off, you've just taken no, it straight I, out of the bag I and you're chopping taken, yeah, the top and the bottom off. I haven't taken the skin off, so I'll do it like that. Cut it in the middle, or if you want to peel it first, which, which one is easier for you. So just take the skin off, usually I use my hand or anything that is easy. The, the skin comes off easily, you don't need much. And it looks like that's much easier than the way I do it, because I peel it before I've cut it in half. Yeah. And that looks like the skin just fell off. So it might be the way I'm going to do it in future, Aisha. Okay. Yeah, so I'm just going to put this in the bin. Right, so that's my onion. Or if you composting, make sure it goes in your compost. <laughs> yeah, so that's my onion. So what I'm going to do at this point, I'm going to chop the onions. I'm going to dice it. So I'll just cross, cut it across like that. So you're cutting it sort of lengthways down the onion from top to bottom. Yes into to pieces not too small not, not too, too big small, yeah not too big either so and then i'm gonna cut it so you've rotated it to 90 degrees and you're cutting in the opposite direction now yeah. in pieces about so, the same size that you did in the long direction yeah so they're gonna come out as diced onions oh. and the end bits doesn't really matter it doesn't have to be perfect because you're gonna soften them anyway in the oil Okay, so you're just going to do the same with the other same half? Same with the other half, yeah. So I was taught a trick when I was at school all that time ago. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I was told if you cut the top off where the sort of pointy bit is but leave the, the 
traily bits on. Uh-huh. <laughs> Very good description there. <laughs> and then peeled it and then cut it in half. Uh-huh. And when you diced, you cut all the way down, but not all the way to the tail. And then cut in the opposite direction, it was easier. Yeah, it is. And that might help you if you're struggling to do that the very last bit. Yeah, just do it as, yeah, whatever works for you. So I just put this here, side. So you've chopped your onion, you're just popping it on a plate so it's out of the way. And everyone is just so impressed that you still don't have a tear in your eyes doing these onions. (laughs) How do you do it? Well, I guess I'm used to chopping onions. I'm a cook. (laughs) So I... Chop onions every day, <laughs> almost every day anyway, yeah. So oh, we got a question here. Anna says, if you weren't very good at chopping onions, could you use frozen onions? Frozen onions is even better for me because then, <laughs> <laughs> then you don't have to do all the peeling, all the crying. Yeah, so yeah. Brilliant, that's really good to know. <laughs> so with the aubergine, I'm just going to cut it like that. Just so you cut it just off. below where the... The, 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 the green light bit. green top has yeah. come down onto the main purplish body. <laughs> okay, good description. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna cut it in half like that. So you, uh, Aisha's just cut it in half, um, same direction that she cut the top off in, and then in half the opposite way, so it will now lay flat yeah. on a carpet chopping board. Yeah. So at this point, I'll just lay it flat like that, and then just you don't make this to small so we're cutting this into cubes, cubes so the yeah. same way we did the onion, the onion but much more well, bigger, bigger cubes because this is bigger so we go like this um at least is it medium size medium size i'd say um yeah. no bigger than the top joint of your thumb i'd say <laughs> <laughs> we, if we're giving yeah <laughs> measurements so, based on the human body yeah so i'll just put that aside but we need a whole um, aubergine for that. I'm just doing half just to show you how it's done. Yeah. Brilliant. So you'd normally chop a whole aubergine a whole, up. Yeah, a whole aubergine you need for this. I'm just showing you how to do it. So it looks like it's quite a soft, uh, yeah. or, but is, is it in that nice? No, it's not, it does, it's not soft. Probably it's, it's a little bit firm. Okay. When, it, when it's soft, then it's like going off. Oh, it looks like your knife's going through it quite nicely. Yeah, that's, nice, that's what I'm saying. Sharp. Yeah, I've got a very sharp knife. So now I've done my aubergine. I'll just put it aside here. And now next is the courgette. You need a whole courgette, but I'll just do half just to show you. So how are we going to chop our courgette? So you chop the top off? Yeah, the same way I did the aubergine. Chop the bottom off? Yeah. And then at this point, I'm going to do half. So I'll just... So you just cut it in half length ways so you've yes. got less to worry yeah, about. for me it's easier. Sorry, some cut it in half people, width ways. Yeah, some people want to do it whole, but for me, half is easier for me to mm-hmm. cut. Now I'm just cutting it in half length ways. Yes, yeah. and then I'll just go like Chopping this it into one. slices. Yeah, this one is a little bit thicker because mm-hmm. the aubergine um, quick cook quite easily. Okay. Doesn't take long to cook. So Brilliant. I do, I do the cubes a little bit thick. And that's my aubergine, and then I've got the tomato. tomato. <laughs> Go like this in the middle. The knife is sharp, that's why. So going on with our ways of doing this conveniently, mm-hmm. could you use tinned chopped tomatoes? Definitely. <laughs> I, 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 I love tinned food, honestly. Sometimes it's so easy, but obviously if you want to eat fresh, you have to... Go the hard way. So I like, should cut the tomato into um, quarters and yeah. then she's cutting each quarter into the three three, bits. Yeah. It all depends how big the tomatoes is. If you have like you can use cherry tomatoes. With cherry tomatoes you just like maybe half them. Okay. Yeah. If you have the big tomatoes, maybe you cut them in four. So that's like yeah. So this is the tomato done. So the um, tomatoes approximately this Sort of in between the courgette and the aubergine in size. Yeah. <laughs> Onion That's smallest, cool. courgette yeah. next, tomatoes, and then aubergine, if you're looking for what sizes. So, just empty that in there. Now, 
there I've got the papers. I've already done these ones. This is four papers. Oh, cut this is a bit back. I've been waiting for. How to properly <laughs> cut a pepper in half well, and not get seeds everywhere. This is the way I do it. So you might have a better way of doing it. So, but for me, this is easier. I just cut it in half again. So you ha you've left everything on it straight yes. out of the packet. Yes. Gonna cut it straight in half straight. lengthways. Yeah. So you can see. That's the stock, it's hard. Okay. So what I do at this point, I just use my hands because it's easier. Because as we said, the hands are the best tools. Yes, <laughs> so I just use my hands to take the end bit off and the bits inside the seeds. So you sort of pinched the um, white bit down the seam yes. and, then and then scooped it down. the top yes. out with your hands. Yes. As you can see, I'll just push this down like that and then just take this off. Yeah. So it's better, so easy. And, and then a final seed. tap to make sure yeah. that you've got the last of the seeds out. Everything is out, yeah. That's and as good. we said, your hands are a really good tool. Yeah. So if you want to run your fingers along the inside to make sure that there yeah, are no more pop, seeds in them, pop. they'll pop them, they'll yeah. find out for you. That's it. Um, that's done. So I've already prepared the... Oh, go on, I should say it. Here's <laughs> one I prepared Here's earlier. One. Here's what I made earlier. <laughs> So if you could come in here. Yep. Yeah. Oh, oh yeah. I was just making me walk with a tripod. I'm very sorry. <laughs> I'm going to yeah. walk very carefully so I don't give anyone motion sickness. <laughs> here we right. are. I'm just going to pop the tripod up a little bit. Don't worry about that. There we are. And then I'll point it downwards so you can see. Oh, I undid the screw too much. <laughs> Point it downwards so you can see in. So, so can you see inside? Yeah? Yep. Yeah. I'll just lean here. Alright. <laughs> so here's what I made earlier. Yay! So what did you do to make it look so fantastic like okay. this, Aisha? In here I've got the onions. Let me bring the onions. Let me just bring the plates so you see. Yep. Yeah. So in here I've got the onions which I soft them for about Minutes. So you pop the onions in first, yes. soften them for five minutes. With a bit of oil, any oil really, olive oil, vegetable oil, sunflower, any oil that you have. I use um, vegetable oil for this. Um, then put the onions, vegetable oil, um, mixed herbs. Ah, there's the mixed I herbs. Put mixed herbs <laughs> and a, a pinch of fresh thyme. I, have, I just love the smell of fresh thyme. That's a, that's a new one on us. Yes, fresh thyme. So I put put a bit of, of fresh thyme in there. Mm -hmm. So leave it to cook and then, um, what is it called? Vegetable stock. You can use two. So this is a stock cube, stock cube. of any brand? Any Does it not brand, have to be any specific yeah, brand? It doesn't really matter. Yeah, two stock cubes. So leave it to cook for about five minutes or so. So when you did took the stock cube out, did you put them in whole or did you crumble oh yeah, them? I crushed, I crushed it. Did you did add it? any extra liquid or? No, okay. I didn't. So if you have your mortar, I use this. Oh, pestle and mortar. Pestle and mortar. Never it's know it. which bit is which on a pestle and mortar, but I know one's the thing you crush with and one's the thing you crush into. Oh, this <laughs> is the one you use to crush. <laughs> But yes. you can use your fingers you to crush them fingers, as well. Just as sometimes I find it, sometimes they come like they're hard. Yep. So I use the um, mortar and pestle. So five, after five minutes, I'll add the rest of the ingredients, which is the courgette aubergine. So I put them for about 10 minutes, and then after 10 minutes, I add the tomatoes. So you put, soft. So let's, let's recap that, see if I remember. <laughs> you pop the onions in. Thyme. With oil and her mixed herbs, herbs and the fresh thyme, fresh thyme and black pepper. And black pe oh, and black pepper. Black pepper and garlic. Garlic. Yeah. And you let them soften for about for about five, five minutes. minutes. Yes. You then added your stock cubes. Yes. And at the same point, you added your aubergine and courgette. Courgette. Yeah. You left that for another ten minutes. Ten minutes. Stay, so is that the stage we're at now? Yes, yeah, so mm -hmm. I know I've already done and then after ten minutes you put the chopped tomatoes. Okay. Freshly chopped tomatoes. So this is this is what you get oh. and then a little bit of um tomato puree to give it a bit of colour. 
Okay, yeah. okay. The, the tomato puree is just for color. If you don't want it, that's fine. Oh, it smells yeah. amazing in here, yeah. Aisha. So now it's all cooked. I've, I pre pre soaked my couscous already. So what did you soak your couscous with? Just, just plain water? water. But some people, will, some will use like vegetable stock or whatever you want to use. And this is where we say we said a hundred grams, yeah. but because we're doing the four peppers, we've got hundred and fifty. Yeah. And approximately how much water did you put in? Um, about 100 milliliters. So okay. you don't want to cook too So soft. is that sort of just covering it? Yeah, just covering okay. it and then yeah, leave it for about maybe five, six minutes. Okay. Because you put it in here so you cook anyway. So I'm just going to put that in here. So you're just going to scoop all of the couscous, all couscous into the frying pan. So you've, you've got it on a low heat. Low heat. So you've done everything on a low heat, have you? Try not to put too much water because otherwise it will be soggy. <laughs> so it needs to be fluffy like this. Yeah. Yours, yeah. Ooh. So just mix it because the couscous is almost cooked. Yeah. So at this point now it's just to mix it and then combine everything together. Um, so if you didn't have couscous and you were using rice, would you use slightly less? Yeah, with rice, I'll use like 100 grams of mm -hmm. rice. Well, obviously, you cook that separate, that you need to cook. Do. So you pre-cook the rice? Yeah, pre-cook the rice. And then pop well. it in if you're doing rice? Yeah. Okay. It's the same thing. But then to give the rice a bit of colour, you can use like turmeric. Ah. This that yellowish colour. And if you feel very rich, I suppose you could use saffron. Oh yeah, that's why I didn't say saffron because that's expensive. <laughs> well, us being in Croydon, the home of Saffron Square, and that's where Croydon gets its name from the yeah, crocuses, we well. should mention the saffron. Yeah, well, yeah, just to give it the colour. That's the rice, because rice is like plain white. Mm -hmm. So, it's done, really. Brilliant. Yeah. So do I need to go back to my outside position yes, now? Yes, I'm Okay. Now, so I'm just yeah. going to... I'm about to move again, everyone. So anyone who gets motion sickness, uh, this is your warning. <laughs> just moving back out. There we are. Aisha didn't warn me she was going to make me move today. <laughs> Hadn't practised. <laughs> Sorry about those little little knocks as I moved. So I'm back ready waiting for Aisha to tell me what she's going to do next. Right. I'm really excited. I'm going to bring this here. Yeah. So at this point. So you've put your cut peppers in a baking tray. Baking a tray. deep baking tray. Yeah. So I think it might be a roasting tin if we're going to be specific about well, them. Well you can use a baking tray to be honest. It's, it's just that because this is this size is perfect. For okay. Them quantity of course. So does it need to be deep or could it does it need to be a deep tray? No, not really. No, just that this one is deep. Who am I looking for now? <laughs> and, uh, okay, it all is going. Yeah. Okay. And we've got all eight peppers sitting in the with all their seeds out just waiting for their filling. Yes. <laughs> Who am I looking for now? I've lost my spoon. <laughs> <laughs> I'll take another one. I just want to scoop this off. I think you left it in the couscous bowl. Oh, okay. <laughs> right, so I'm going to put my gloves on because I'll be touching the peppers and this is hot as well. So know. this is going to be warm. Yeah. This is our warning. We played with fire already. <laughs> no, not played with fire. Uh, so Glenn, Glenn obviously has just joined us. Um, we said earlier you could use rice instead of couscous, Glenn. You have to use slightly less, so about 100 grams rather than 150 we used, and you need to pre-cook it. And I would suggest popping something like some turmeric in to make sure that it has a, a good colour yeah. rather than the white rice. And then Anna has got a very interesting idea of can we use pasta? With this, well, I'm not sure. I'm it's not something it. we've ever tried. <laughs> I'm not sure about pasta, but I know I've had lasagna you in a pepper. Small pasta, you know, very small. Probably like it might pasta, work really? with very small pasta. I think you might need to pre-cook it, Anna. Um, yeah. If so you I'm have a go, let us know because we're interested as well. Yeah. So I'm just um, stopping. So, sorry. Just whilst, whilst we were talking about that, Aisha is just popping the mix 
about two spoonfuls in each pepper. Yeah, but you can stuff it as much as you want. And you're pressing it down pressing so, it's, it down, so it's, it's nice and filled. Want it, like, it, it, that's a main meal. Yeah. So it depends on what you want. So just push it down. Mm -hmm. And these are the ingredients we've, we've chosen to put in our peppers. Mm -hmm. But is, is there anything you couldn't put in a stuffed pepper vegetable wise? You couldn't. Because um, for me, there's not enough mushroom in there, but that's because I love my mushrooms. Yeah, you <laughs> could put, if you say like you, you, you could put, you could put mushrooms, you could do um, chickpeas, Ooh. you could do butter beans. So, what else? If you have an experiment with what you put in your stuffed pepper, do let us know. Yeah. Because we'd love to hear what you've tried out as well. Yeah, so probably next time when I do it for, for an individual, I'll use your recipe. Oh, best <laughs> recipe. We definitely have to try it out. So send us any interesting filling ideas, yeah. but only if you've tried them first. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> We're not going to be your guinea pigs. So just push it down. That's why I had to wear the gloves because there's a it's a warm. lot of touching <laughs> so we're almost done Maxine's going oh chickpeas <laughs> yeah you could yeah it's really with butter beans probably kidney beans I'm not sure but I've used the chickpeas I've used the butter beans so, I'm yeah. presuming you'd have to pre-cook them yeah I always buy the tin <laughs> tinned <laughs> <It's already cooked. laughs> yeah it's already cooked. So I presume you could eat this at this point because everything's cooked. Everything is cooked, yeah. Apart from the pepper. Apart from, yeah, you know, even the pepper you can just, <laughs> yeah, you eat raw pepper, but I mean it will taste better cooked, <laughs> cooked with this. Almost there, a little bit left. So we're just filling up the rest of the peppers, making them really nice and stuffed with our leftover mix. Yeah. You, is this you can't have too much? No. <laughs> Oh, the better. So you could use, use chopped tomatoes. Yeah. And what else? We, so we've said you could use frozen onions, yes. chopped tomatoes. Yeah. But I think you're then going to have to get your knife out for the aubergine and the courgette. Yeah, definitely. Because uh, you can't get them pre-prepared. No, definitely. <laughs> I'll just do the last little bit. Doesn't take long. So I presume our, would our 100 grams have done nine halves but not ten halves it will do okay yeah like i said it all depends on how much you want to stuff it so <laughs> and we're definitely stuff. peckish here at croydon vision yeah. all the time everyone is waiting <laughs> glenn where are you i told glenn that he was not allowed to be taste tester today because i had some wonderful taste testers ready we will be doing the quiz later uh, okay yeah i'm done so that's it so well stuffed. Brilliant. And now. So if you had some, away. I'll let you pop that away and then I'll ask yeah. the question. Yeah. <laughs> if you had some leftover couscous mm -hmm. that you didn't want to stuff into your peppers, you what, could, what could you do with it? You could eat it as a meal. Yeah. Yeah, just, um, if it's, this is, I mean, even meat eaters, they can just add chicken at the side. Mm -hmm. yeah, so I, 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 I'm, I'm going to ask the question. Would you put meat in your stuffed peppers or would you, you have it on the yes, side? Yes, yes. Um, if, you, if you are using, if you want to put meat, obviously you, you need ground meat. Yeah. Like minced beef, turkey, chicken. So you'd probably have cooked that off cooked with your veg mix. With the veg, exactly. That's for meat eaters. And for vegetarians, in, in, if they want something meaty or that, or that looks like meat, they can use the... the Corn mince. Yeah. That was, yeah so and I'm sure if you that. cook with corn mince, you know how to do it because I, I think there's a few extra steps with corn mince from what I remember. Yeah, with the corn mince, it's already mince. Just like you have yeah. the mince, you just add it in there. Mm -hmm. So at this point, I'm going to just um, drizzle olive oil, what, whatever oil you have in your cupboard. So you deliberately used vegetable oil and olive earlier and olive oil yes. now. So is there yeah. a reason for that? Not really, because I just wanted to use the two oils. It doesn't make any <laughs> difference. <laughs> yeah. I just like the olive oil on top. Yeah. I suppose if you're a cheesy person, could you put some cheese on the top so it oh, would yeah. melt? Oh, yeah. Of course. And then 
So at this point, I've already done, yeah, so that's it. Right. Can you put too much oil on top in case you accidentally oop your hand and do a little bit more than you were expecting? Not really, because okay. it's going to stay at the bottom of the pan anyway. Brilliant. So you, if you accidentally put too much, that's why it's going to stay, because you're going to mm -hmm. take it off. Just want to push this there. So at this point now, I've already uh, preheated the oven to 240. So oh. nice hot oven. <laughs> yeah, it's already hot. I'm just gonna put the foil over, cover it with the foil to stop it from drying out and then burning. So this one gives it a, a nice moisture when it's cooking, steaming, it, and it protects it from burning. Thank so you. I'm gonna put it in the oven for 20 minutes. Okay. Yeah. We'll watch you do this and then we'll move on to our quiz. Pardon? We'll watch you do this bit in the oven yeah. and then we're going to move on to our quiz whilst yeah. it's cooking in the background so that's about it just put the foil over it's just to, to keep it moist for it not to go dry and sometimes if you leave it so when i to pop the foil over the top you just crimp around the corners yeah, and to hold it together. just to hold it on top yeah. rather than worrying about it all that's it. Are we off? So we've got a hot oven and yeah, Aisha's going to make sure she puts her oven gloves on before she puts anything in. Because yeah. remember, hot oven. <laughs> yeah. Put it top shelf. Just cook speaker. Are some. we going to cook it at 240? Yes. Okay. We're going to cook it at 240. Yeah. For 20 minutes. 20 minutes. And what are we looking for when it comes out? Um, the, the peppers you see that the peppers like um, have dropped a bit because they, they're pre-cooked. Yeah. They're like, because now they're all plumped and hard, so you feel them, they're a bit soft. Brilliant. So if you want the peppers really soft, you could leave, leave it for 25 minutes. Mm -hmm. But some, I, I like it when it's a little bit crunchy. So is this no longer than 25 minutes yes, now? Yes, yes, no longer than 25 minutes, then it's cooked. Because everything, remember everything else is cooked. Yeah. It's just the peppers really. Okay, yeah. so thank you, and we're going to leave you looking after our peppers, yeah. and I'm going to move us over to the quiz. I don't have to physically move, but I am swinging the camera around, so oh, I need to loosen it before I can swing it. There we are. There we go. Round and 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 round, and round we go. And hello, quiz team, or quiz masters. <laughs> hello. <laughs> Welcome. <laughs> Hi, um, it's me again, it's um, Anna Smith, and today I'm being helped by Charlotte. Um, Charlotte has, we've been very busy at Coy's Mission recently, so Charlotte's um, just helping us out for a little while. Um, she's been helping us out to the end of September, so we're really pleased to have Charlotte. Um, I'm just going to let her tell you a little bit about herself. Okay, sure. Well, hello everyone. Um, welcome to the quiz. I'm really happy to be here. I'm really enjoying being at Croydon Vision. Um, learning a lot already. Um, everybody here is just lovely and warm and friendly. It's just a lovely community. And even though I'm here for a short time, it's just been a really, really enjoyable time. So thank you for having me. Um, and I hope you enjoy the quiz. Okay. Um, we're going to make a really good start and start not hang around as much. How are you going to do it? I'm just going to give a little reminder to everyone. Don't write your comments in the answers because yeah. then you give... So don't write your answers in the comments because otherwise you give a free answer to everyone. Yes. Yeah, I've got to say that, Catherine. <laughs> That's okay. Don't write the answers in the comments. Write them somewhere else. So that you can look back at what you've put, but don't write them in the comments. Thank you, Catherine. So I'm gonna I'm gonna do round one, and then Charlotte's gonna give the answers when we get there, and then Charlotte's gonna do round two, and I'll give the answers, and then three we reverse it again. You'll see how it goes when we get there. So I'm just gonna say so just make a note somewhere, could be electronically on a computer, yeah. pen and paper. If you're a braillist on braille, on your braille note taker. Yeah. It could be any way that is good works for you. Okay. Anything and that works for you. Okay, 
round one. This, by the way, is um, a TV quiz. So, um, you know, dig out all your knowledge that you know about the TV. We're going to be going down memory lane a little bit as well. And um, there are some really interesting questions. At least I hope you find them interesting. So let's start. So, one. Which group performed during the opening minutes of Channel 5's launch in 1997 in the UK? Was it Bucks Fizz, The Beatles, or The Spice Girls? So I'll read that again. Which group performed during the opening minutes of Channel 5's launch in 1997 in the UK? Was it Bucks Fizz, The Beatles, or The Spice Girls? It's even ages since Channel 5. Oh, it's yeah. like had Channel 5 forever, and then we've actually only had it 23 years. Well, I, little fun fact about me, I was on a, a conservat conservation advert on Channel 5 when it first launched. Oh. There is images of me raking hay as a child in the woods near where I lived. Oh. <laughs> there you go. Wow. So I should know the answer to that because I've watched it, but yeah. oh, it was a bit challenging. Yeah. <laughs> okay, which British soap opera recorded the largest audience for a single episode with over 30 million views, viewers. You need to think, when is the time when an awful lot of people are watching television and what dramatic events have happened? Mm. So that's how you need to think about it. So I'll read the question again. Which British soap opera recorded the largest audience for a single episode with over 30 million viewers. Wow, we watch classic. Watch, yeah, <laughs> probably one of the really big. We're, we're scratching our heads over here as yeah, well, so don't yeah, worry if you yeah, haven't got it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, three. Where is Strictly Come Dancing filmed? Mm. You're going to kick yourself, I'm going to tell you. You're going to kick yourself. <laughs> so oh, I'll let you help where, if you watch Strictly. <laughs> yeah. Where is Strictly Come Dancing filmed? And four, in what year did long-running children's programme Blue Peter first broadcast in the UK? Was it 1952, 1958, or 1969? When did it first broadcast? In what, in what year? Did long-running children's programme Blue Peter first broad broadcast in the UK? Was it 1952, 1958, or 1969? Do you know, I used to love that programme. Yeah, I used to love it. And there's that epic with the elephant. Do you remember that bit? Oh, the see, I'm, I'm the Tracy Island generation. Oh, <laughs> I mean, they showed it and showed it and showed it. There's an app on YouTube if you want to go and have a look at it. It's so hilarious. It's one of the most hilarious bits on television I think there's ever been. I just remember there being a, 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 a real rush to try and get toilet rolls for the Tracy Island. Aww. And then when Fairy brought out its new and improved formula... And you couldn't get your fairy washing up liquid bottle for whatever Blue Peter was oh, doing yeah. that week. Yeah. Now, I love the fact that fairy goes on and on and on. Yeah. Because <laughs> it always yeah. had to be a fairy liquid bottle. No others would, would suffice. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Five. Who played Rodney Trotter in Only Fools and Horses? I know that one. Yeah. <laughs> Who played Rodney Trotter? In only fools and horses. That's going down memory lane. That was a real classic comedy. I did on I think sometimes, but it, I think they do repeat yeah. occasions. Especially yeah. if you watch Dave, I'm sure it's on Dave. Yeah, yeah. probably. <laughs> probably on the um, on the the channels where you, they're, they're you, 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 you down memory lane. Yeah. 
<laughs> so then ah so uh sex which <laughs> actor portrays portrayed inspector balls i know a fun fact about this go ahead um please. colin dexter the author of morse yeah. said that no one else could play morse which is why there wasn't another series until they brought out Endeavour with the new younger actor. Uh-huh. Yeah. Because they couldn't do it whilst the actor we're talking about yeah. was still alive. Wow. So that gives you a bit of a hint. Yeah. Well, that Catherine's actually giving you a bit of a hint there. She's giving you a little bit of a hint there. Um, so that you were listening to what Catherine said, she's giving you a bit of a hint there. Okay, let's press on. So seven. Who? I'm sorry, the most one was six. I forgot to say the number. And this is number seven. Who became the first female presenter of Question Time in 2019? Mm. So if you're a bit of a sports fan and you like sports quizzes, mm. uh, that might be one that you're able to answer. So seven. Who became the first female presenter of question of question question time oh and a question right in, in 2019 that one. Mm. okay for all of you game of throne fans here's a question for number eight what is the capital of West, West Rose in Game of Thrones. I'll read that again, number eight. What is the capital of West Rose in Game of Thrones? Those of you who've watched this will know what that is. I've never watched it. Never. Oh, I'm doing some sign language which isn't going to help you guys. <laughs> My friend made me read the books. Yeah. I listened to them on audiobook, but there is yeah. there are two audiobooks per book. They are so oh, long. Big. Yeah, I got some of the audiobooks and I tried to listen to it and got a bit lost. So I maybe need to try again because I really like to, to, to get into the story. Yeah. But it is a very long listen. Yes. Nine. What is the name of the per of the prison? In the popular BBC sitcom Porridge, starring Ronnie Bark. Now, this really is going down memory lane, isn't it? So, number nine, what is the name of the prison in the popular BBC sitcom Porridge, starring Ronnie Bark? Now, they always gave you this answer at the beginning. But it's been so long since we've all watched Porridge. Well, I've actually seen a few. I feel like I can't remember the name. I've actually seen a few repeats. I think they did repeats with the lockdown. So I think they're trying to start to scratch what they've been put on. Because of course they weren't able to make new programmes. So it has been on recently, and they give you the name of the prison at the beginning. Oh, it's easy in the in the yes. Yeah. I, can, I can picture it as well, but yeah. I can't remember the words. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. Okay, the final one of this round, number 10. In which fictional town was the sitcom, this is really going bad, I'm really Dad's Army set. Was it Wilmington on Sea, Wilmington on Sea, or Stanton on Sea. Come on, Dad's fan, Dad's Army fans. That's when we go. No, I Remember, it's somewhere on <laughs> Sea. <laughs> yeah. So, um, in which fictional town? This is number ten. In which fictional town was the sitcom Dad's Army set? Was it Wilmington on Sea, Wilmington on Sea? or Stanton on C. And of course, that's all the questions for this round. If you need any questions repeated, please comment, put it in the comments and we'll be, be read the questions. And um, 
and the chant in a few minutes will give us the answers. So we're not going to wait too long because I know Aisha said no more than 25 minutes in that yeah, oven. Yeah. <laughs> Um, well, we'll give a little bit, we'll give about 30 seconds until yeah. that'll give you enough time to write a number in the answer if you want them repeated. Yeah. Because we're on a little bit of a delay here. Okay. We're about 10 seconds, or 10 to 20 seconds behind. Okay, I think, haven't heard anything yet. Okay. If you get, before we get to the question, no, no more repeats of questions now. Charlotte, go okay. on with the answers. Off we go. So, answer to question one, which group performed during the opening minutes of Channel 5's launch in 1997 in the UK? Was it Bucks, Biz, The Beatles or The Spice Girls? It was, of course, The Spice Girls. 1997, Spice Girls, makes sense. Yeah. Big in the 90s. Okay, number two. Which British soap opera recorded the largest audience for a single episode? It was EastEnders, <laughs> of course, on Christmas Day in 1986. Is that the Dirty Den episode? It, it might have been the Dirty Den episode. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Number three, where is Strictly filmed? That is Elle's Tree Studios. I think they mention it sometimes on the show. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But I'm sure, haven't they filmed in Blackpool they at some have, point? Yes, and they, yeah, they always they have one in Blackpool. So if you put Blackpool Blackpool. down, I think you might get a sneaky bonus point because yeah, they have filmed yeah. there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Number four, what year did Blue Peter first broadcast? It was 1958. That was quite a one, I thought. Because I just think it's been going on for forever. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's always been there. It's older than me. <laughs> Number five, which, uh, sorry, who played Rodney Trotter in Only Fools and Horses was Nicholas Lindhurst, mm -hmm. which I'm sure a lot of you will probably remember. Number six, which actor portrayed Inspector Morse? That was John Thor, mm -hmm. for any Morse fans. Number seven, who became the first female presenter of Question Time was Fiona De Bruce. Number eight, what is the capital of Westeros in Game of Thrones? It is King's Landing. It means nothing to me. <laughs> I was I was doing the uh, sign for King, uh, uh, no, King, yeah, yeah. <laughs> crown and a beard. Yeah, <laughs> that makes sense. <laughs> because I don't watch it. So no, if you didn't watch it, you didn't know. <laughs> Number nine. What's the name of the prison in Porridge? It was HMP Slade. Yeah, that's the yeah. one. <laughs> Just as they locked the door, wasn't it? Yeah. yeah. It's funny he's going in and they, yeah. it's funny he's going in and they showed you yeah. the... <laughs> And last but not least, number 10. Which town was the sitcom Dad's Army set in? It was Warmington on Sea. Mm. Like the three on seas. So do let us know how you've done in the comments. Because we want to know who we're giving a virtual stuffed pepper to this week. <laughs> <laughs> to go with the, I know somebody got a virtual cupcake, and I think someone has a virtual trifle. Yeah. There might have even been a virtual pizza. No, it's the time that they get like Star Trek, where they could zoom things, objects to different places. Mm. That would be an exciting time because we'll be able to, I don't know. <laughs> well done, Anna, for five. Maxine, you're being beaten by Anna at the moment. Sure. Anna's our high scorer. She's the one to beat. Well done, Anna. Let's well get done. on with round two. Okay, and explicitly on to round two. Yeah. So, keeping with the TV theme, in which city do Ross and Rachel get married in Friends? Is it New York, Vegas, or Baltimore? Mm -hmm. In which city do Ross and Rachel get married in Friends? New York, Las Vegas, or Baltimore. I remember that one. I've seen all the friends that so it's about 50 times. <laughs> I'm not just a real fan of friends. Oh, I love it. Love yeah. it. Just don't say the first line or we'll all be clapping. <laughs> <laughs> Number two. Which UK show is the world's longest news and current affairs TV programme? Mm. Longest running, uh, maybe. Was it Panorama, News Night Tonight, or Horizon? That was which UK show is the world's longest running New York news and current affairs TV programme? Panorama, Newsnight Tonight, or Horizon? Mm. 
Mm. When they seem to think they know for everything. I think this is where years of experience come into play, helping you. Yes. <laughs> yes. All right, number three. The following have all presented which TV show? Bruce Forsyth, Larry Grayson, Jim Davidson, and Mal and Sue. Mal Jedroke and Sue Perkins. Sue Perkins went to the same school as me. Did she? Same secondary school. It's the only claim to fame I have. (laughs) Oh, she's pretty cool. She is pretty cool. (laughs) That was which. The following all presented which TV shows? We're looking for the show they presented. Bruce Forsyth, Larry Grayson, Jim Davidson, and Mel and Sue. What have they all presented? Okay. For me, I think Jim Davidson is the iconic one of those. I saw that and I thought. Yeah, he was the one who got it for me. <laughs> Number four. In 1995, more than 22 million people tuned in to a special BBC Panorama interview with Princess Diana, which journalists conduct the, conducted the oh interview. So that was more than 22 million people tuned into a special BBC Panorama interview with Princess Diana, which journalists conducted the interview. Mm. Yeah. I can't give too much away about that one because I think people will get it if I say it. <laughs> Number five, what colour is Thunderbird 2 piloted by Virgil Tracy in Thunderbird? Now I, I, have, to, this one. I have to go through them in reverse because you have yeah. to see them five, yeah. four, yeah. three. Oh yes, I've talked two. <laughs> That's what colour is Thunderbird 2? That was the one with Virgil in Thunderbirds. Yes, now number six. What quiz show was the first full program to be shown on Channel 4 on the afternoon of its launch in 1982? I think there's a bit of a clue in the question. Yeah. Well, yeah, I can only think of one mm. long running quiz show on. Mm. And that's what quiz, so, quiz, yeah. quiz show was the first full program to That would be my guess. Show. Yeah, yeah, I know the one, yeah. If that's the one. <laughs> yes. <laughs> no, no singing the theme. Then it is. <laughs> <laughs> Which member of the Beatles narrated the first series of Thomas the Tank Engine? This is a good one to know for quizzes because it comes up quite often. It does, it does, yeah. Mm. And that was which member of the Beatles narrated the first oh. series of Thomas the Tank Engine on TV? Yes, I think I know. Mm. Mm. I don't think about that. <laughs> yes. That's the answer. <laughs> oh dear, right, number eight. What is the main pub called in Peaky Blinders where the Shelbys meet? I've only watched one episode of Peaky Blinders. Oh, it? No, I haven't watched them. Yes, I haven't watched them. No. I might mm. like to, because from what I've heard, they would be just really good. Yeah. It passed me by as well, so I'm, I'm completely lost on that now. Yeah. And that was, what is the main pub called in Peaky Blinders where the Shelbys meet? Okay, on, on to number nine. Long running ITV police drama The Bill, set in which? Fictional suburb. Now, Catherine has some really interesting um, knowledge about this. I know you, Catherine. Yeah, so a lot of the bill was filmed in Croydon and in Sutton. Mm. So, uh, m- lots of it under the flyover where there's now a car park. Mm-hmm. You, lots of lots of dodgy deals happened under the flyover in the bill. Yeah, and you used to that. see lots of the um, police cars driving around the area. But they weren't real police cars because they uh, had cardboard over uh, the flashing lights uh, on the top. Right, yeah. So you knew they weren't real police cars. There you go. <laughs> Just to oblige you, number nine, that was long running ITV police drama. The film was set in which fictional suburb? So not so Croydon and Sutton. Not Croydon. <laughs> <laughs> okay, number ten. Who played Alf Garnet in Till Death Do Us Part? Death Us Do Part or Do Us Part? Death. Do us part. Part. I think it's yeah, a bit so more. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Death to us part. Who played Alf Garnet in Till Death to us part? Not a clue on that one. No, I would not no. be doing well this week with a quiz. No. <laughs> Alrighty, we'll give you a few minutes to yeah. have a little jot down. Let us know if you know any more um, answers. Mm. Oh, uh, Anna's just written a comment. Yeah. But I can't quite read it on my screen because she's in the white area. Ola, what, what has Anna said? <laughs> Something about West Croydon, I think. Yeah. <laughs> Which one? Uh, yeah, Anna was saying it was also filmed in West Croydon bits as well. Oh, there you go. The bill. 
all over Croydon because any time they need brutal architecture, we come out quite well in Croydon. Yeah. Where? Someone in West, somewhere in West Croydon, they filmed a lot of the bill. Yeah. I don't know what other questions you have, so I'm not going to say my last fact about Croydon and okay. things that were filmed here. <laughs> okay. So, so if no one has any more requests for answers, we're going to go and give the answer. Sorry, requests for questions. We're not giving answers yet. <laughs> we're going to go ahead and give you the answers. Okay. So. Round two, number one. In which city do Ross and Rachel get married in Friends? It was actually in Los, Las Vegas at the end of season five. Oh, we've just had a question. Could we have number four read again, please? Yes. So that was the answer was Vegas, was it? Yeah. yeah. I thought Las it was. Vegas. Yeah. Las Vegas. So could we have question four again, please, Charlotte? Yes. Uh, number four, in 1995, more than 22 million people tuned in to a special BBC panorama interview with Princess Diana. Which journalist conducted the interview? Okay, so we'll go on through the answers. Okay, so, number two, which UK show is the world's longest news and current affairs TV programme? it after Jim Davidson. I think that was where no. I stopped my watching. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I think also it kind of stopped ah. and then started in a more modern format. Mm. Very much later. As long as there was still a cuddly toy. Yeah. 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 <laughs> oh, yeah. Wobbly man. Yeah. I don't think it really took off in this form. But anyway, let's press on. In number four, <coughs> in 1995, more than 22 million people turned into a special BBC panorama interview with Princess Diana. Which journalist conducted the interview? Well, of course, it was Martin Basher. I should got it just as you went to give the answers. <laughs> well done, <I'm laughs> sure. And of course, number five, um, what colour is Thunderbird 2? Piloted by Vir Virgil Tracy in Thunderbirds. Green. Yeah. Like that, when we're thinking that we're doing peppers today, could you get green peppers? Yeah, but Aisha doesn't, doesn't, want, doesn't particularly like cooking with the green peppers. No, no. Finds them a bit better, bitter. Yeah. Anyway, press on. Number six. What quiz show was the first full program to be shown on Channel 4 on the afternoon of its launch in 1982? It was of course, um, it was of course Countdown. Countdown. <laughs> <laughs> and we won't be playing the theme tune because I'm yeah. sure that will get us um, yeah. muted yeah. again. <laughs> okay, um, now, which member of the Beatles now narrated the first series of Thomas the Tank Engine on TV. Of course it was Ringo Starr. Ringo Starr. Number eight. What is the main pub called in Peaky Blinders where the Shelby's meet? It's, it's the, the Garrison Tavern. The Garrison Tavern. Mm. Yeah. Got to go there. Number nine, long-running ITV police drama, The Bill, was set in which fictional suburb? Sun Hill, of course. Oh, yes. Sun Hill, <laughs> Sun Hill. Okay, and who played, number ten, who played Alf Garnet in Till Death, Us Do Part? Right, right, right there. Till death do us part. <laughs> um, and of course, it was Warren Mitchell. Um, Warren Mitchell. There you go. So, Aisha.
Natasha told me we've got about five minutes till she's going to get them get the peppers out. So we'll keep going with the quiz. Okay. If you hear a little bit of not clanging, but doors opening, that that's Aisha just taking them out of the oven. Okay, I will try and get through this third round quite quickly. Oh, don't rush because no, you, you, they'll be hot when they come out. Yeah. So okay, so this is the final round, everybody. Oh, but don't forget to tell us what you scored oh, yes. for that yes. round. Yes, please do tell us what you scored. Um, and it's exactly the same as with this round. If you need a question repeated, let us know in the comments. We'll go back and repeat it. So, without any more to ado, round three, one. Which TV show features Miranda Hobbs and Samantha Jones? That's a favourite of mine. Yeah. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah. She's not going to give the answer. No. <laughs> I will not. Number two. Ant and Deck first worked together on which children's TV drama? We so, can... Ant and Deck Ants, where did we first see them? What TV, what children's uh, TV show? Number three. <laughs> which Cold Feet character died in a shock car crash? Read that again, number three. Which cold feet character died in a shock car crash? Number four, the casualty fans. Name casualties longest serving character. That, yeah. Uh, uh, I think that's a don't yeah. overthink it. Yeah. Don't overthink <laughs> this one. And for those who are, who are casualty fans, uh, I suspect you might, if you think about it, but you'll get it. So number five, what is the name of Miranda Hart's best friend in her dick sitcom? So I'll read that again. What is the name of Miranda Hart's best friend in her, in her hit sitcom? Hmm. No cues. <laughs> I can't give a clue, I don't know anything. <laughs> okay. Now, some loving, some hating for this one. Which singing competition was the first to feature Simon Cowell as Ooh, a judge? There's uh, so many to choose yeah, from. Yeah, so I know people like this one. He is, and, and, and he's the sort of person you either love him or you, you don't like or you hate him. Yeah. He's quite a, an interesting character, Simon yeah. Cowell, mm. really. Number seven. Which of these actors has not appeared, so this has not appeared, in The Vicar of Dib Dibley? Amelia Fox, Keely Hawes, I think that's how you pronounce it, yeah. oh, and Peter Capal Capaldi. So which one has not appeared hmm. in, Dibley, in The Vicar of Dibley? You've got a choice of Amelia Fox, Keely Horse or Peter Capel 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 I can't say that name. Capel 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 I know this one because I've been re-watching them all. Ooh. Wow. Yeah. Sorry about that. I couldn't quite get that out there. Okay. Eight. In the TV show Hustle, which played which who played Not the lead too. character? <laughs> Mickey, in, co in quotes, bricks, stone. So, in the TV show Hustle, who played lead character Mickey, and in quotes, bricks, stone. Mm. Mm. So this is when I'm going, I can picture him, because yeah. I've got, I've, I, yeah, I am rather obsessed with the hustle. <laughs> It's quite clever, some mm. of the tricks they do. Actually. But the only problem is now I've got the piece of music, The Hustle, in my head, which yeah. isn't in any way related to the TV series. <laughs> Number nine. Cop drama, Life on Mars, is named after a song by which musician? And we will not pick you up on your spelling. No. <laughs> or your pronunciations when we have to talk about it later. Yeah. No, no. 
Um, and fun little fact about that: Go there on. is currently um, in Croydon a head of him stuck on the floor, and Amy Winehouse on one of the Keep Your Distance. Really? So it's someone who is really iconic just if you had their head. Oh, it's the um, that one. Yeah. <laughs> it's outside the uh, near view cinema oh, down okay. the walk down. I can't remember what yeah. it's called. <laughs> okay, so we'll repeat it for those that didn't hear it again. Um, Cop drama Love on Mars is named after a song by which musician? And finally, the final question of our whole quiz, number 10. Who were the original presenters of Top Gear when it, when it launched in 2002? And if you get all of them, you get a bonus, you get three points for this. Ooh. Ah, so we're giving a point per correct answer. We are, we are giving a point per correct answer. And as you are marking them, you can choose if you are going to accept a point for surname or if you need to have surname and first name. Mm. <laughs> well, we're, we're I think you need both yeah. on this one. Yeah. Well, no, if you're marking it yourself, you can well, make the decision yourself. Yeah, this is true. Yeah. So we'll just give you a little bit of time to let us know if you need any of those questions repeated. I'm sure Aisha might... It, it's, yeah. it, it's smelling amazing yeah. in the kitchen. Yeah. <laughs> So we're just One waiting. One of the things that I really enjoy about doing the quizzes, I always usually get to taste the cooking <laughs> um, after. And so the fish is amazing. And it, it seems at the moment round two was a much harder round than round one. So this is. So we're going to give you three. ten more seconds, and then we're going to go through the answers. Okay. Unless anyone gets in and then we will quickly pause and repeat a question. Yeah. But not if we've gone past it. <laughs> yeah, fine. It's, yeah. It's been a good, um, good memory refresher, some of these questions. Definitely. <laughs> Do you think I've mentioned a long time? Yeah. So when you're ready, go for okay. the answers. Here we go. The answers to round three. Number one, which TV show features Miranda Holtz and Samantha Jones? Was of course Sex of the City. One of my favorites. Yeah, classic. Number two, Ant and Deck first worked together on which children's TV drama? By the Grove. Oh, I'm, I'm, I might be tempted to give someone a bonus point if they can give their names as well. Oh gosh, that's tricky. That's PJ and Duncan. Oh, of course. <laughs> And that's in the same order because they've all they are they always stand as ant and deck. Yes. Yeah. That's true. <laughs> all right, number three. Which cold feet character died in a shop car crash? That was Rachel. Number four. Name Casualty's longest serving character. That was Charlie Fairhead. Number five. What is the name of Miranda Hart's best friend? It is Stevie. If I remember rightly, they make a lot of jokes because Stevie's very petite and Miranda Hart's very tall. Mm. And they play on that. Number six, which singing competition was the first to feature Simon Howell as a judge? It wasn't the X Factor, it was Pop Idol. Ooh, was that the uh, first one? Yeah, so, yeah. It might have been the very first one. Yeah. Hmm. Okay. We can blame him for all of the singing competitions then. <laughs> or praise yeah. him, depending on how you feel. <laughs> They are guilty pleasure of mine. Number seven, which of these actors has not appeared in the Little Diddley? Amelia Fox, Keely Hawes, Peter Capaldi. It was Amelia Fox. That was my guess on quite, yeah, age. <laughs> yeah. Number eight in the TV show Hustle, who played Mickey Bricks Stone, was Adrian Lester. Adrian Lester. I had an A in my head, just couldn't come up with his <laughs> name. Yes. Uh, number nine. Pop drama Life on Mars is named after a song by which musician? It's David Bowie or Bowie or however you choose to pronounce it. <laughs> and the image they've got up in Croydon, it's the Ziggy Stardust face. Oh, yeah. Oh, <laughs> yeah. I'll have to take a picture. <laughs> <laughs> and number 10, last question. Who were the original presenters of Top Gear when it launched in 2002? This is a tricky one. So it's Jeremy Clarkson is one. Richard Hammond is another, and the third one might trip you up. It's Jason Dore. 
Mm. So there you go. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. one for each on those. So have a quick count up of your scores for that round. And, and then we need to get a point for each right answer, the number 10. Anyone yeah. who knew PJ and Duncan gets a bonus point because yeah. I'm, I'm feeling in a nice mood. Oh, Anna might be getting another bonus point because she knew that Will Young won. Oh, yeah. So if you, oh, if you yeah. knew that, you get another bonus point. So let us know your scores, including bonus points for that round, and your total score so we can see who we are sending this virtual <laughs> stuffed pepper to. <laughs> Brilliant. Oh. I think Aisha is just plating up Plating some up. stuffed peppers behind me mm. for my... Looks like she is. Smells really good. Has spoons and things Oh, Neil, you'll have to watch it back and see if you can get yourself some bonus points as well. Who's that? Neil says he's wished he's joined for the questions as he would have got most of them. Oh. <laughs> I, think in, I think without looking at the answers, maybe about half, I might have done a third. Is there very? I think these are very difficult. So well done if you've, you've got them. So Maxine, what's your total score? Because you got, I think... Was it four for the first, three for the second, and two for the third? Well, it got harder and harder. It did. Yeah. Eight in total. I think that's a good score yeah. for this quiz. Okay. Eight. Maxine's yeah. biggest score is eight. So, Anna, let us know how you've done with all your bonus points. <laughs> well, Anna, always make me want to watch a lot of decent TV. <laughs> <laughs> three plus your bonuses. So you got five the first round, three the second round, so that's eight, three the third round, so that's 11, and then two bonus points, so that is 13. Wow. So Anna, you get the virtual stuffed pepper. Which is just about to come, I think. Oh, I'm just going to swivel round again so we can see the reveal. Yeah. So oh, I'm sure we'll come back to you guys in a moment. All right. Ooh, we're just swiveling round so we can see the reveal of the stuffed peppers because I want to see them as they come out as well. So this pan has come out of the oven. It will be hot. The foil round it will be hot. Please take care if you are doing this at home. We know Aisha can touch anything hot and it doesn't burn her. <laughs> but even <laughs> she's taking care. <laughs> So just take a little bit of care, gently touch the foil, don't, don't. Yeah, because when you open it, the steam will come Yeah, so if you've got glasses on, this is the time you have to step back when you open. Your hands away when you're opening the foil, because of the steam. Oh. Right, so Ooh. there you go. These are the stuffed peppers, as you can see. They've been in the oven for... So 25 years, but they're not burned. The top is just brown and they look soft. So it's because of the foil that is preventing it from burning. So I do look incredibly nice. So hopefully, do you want half each or do you want a whole? Would you like a whole half? Whole half, yeah. Yeah, I'll have a little bite. I'll have a little bite. Okay. For dinner, wait. Oh, <laughs> should have planned ahead. I want a pepper. <laughs> Well, oh, we can give you a whole half and you can take it out. So, yeah, if you so give a whole half for, for both, both of them. and then we'll, yeah. we'll, we'll dish it up. Yeah. Okay. So, the knife is just going through. Oh, See, it's it. easy. But at the same time, it, it has that bite, not too soft. Oops, so, I'm just going to take them over once you've plated them up. Ooh. That's the other one going. And just using a spatula to take them out yeah. to make sure. <clears throat> and now you have Aisha's secret recipe <laughs> for making her stuffed peppers. Mm -hmm. So you could have a go at home. Yes. So Aisha's going to bring them over because she's got the gloves. <laughs> <laughs> oh. And I'm going to wait till you have handed oh, over the peppers so we can do our taste tests. <laughs> Which Glenn was very, very envious that he didn't get to taste test this time. So I'm just going to rotate us back round. Here we are. 
So it's just come out of the oven, so be careful. Yeah. Still very hot. It's a tiny little, tiny little bite. It's very hot. Mm. It smells amazing. And you're going to have to tell us what it tastes like. At the moment, we can't taste it, and neither can our members. And they haven't invented... Lovely. It's quite like good that I just had. Yeah. I'm trying to work out what the equivalent of smell vision is for the internet. Mm. <laughs> Answers on a postcode of what you think we should call smells by the internet. <laughs> oh gosh, it's lovely. You can taste the herbs. Definitely taste the herbs. You definitely taste the herbs. I mean, it's slow because it's very hot. <laughs> yeah, it's very hot. Lovely. So you leave it in the, well, like when you take it, I leave it at least five minutes to rest. Well, yeah. we haven't got time. So, <laughs> yeah. so <laughs> instead of us watching you eat all of your pepper, <laughs> which I, would be so very mean to the members, yeah. um, I'll wait till you've finished, Anna, because you were going to tell us what's happening next week. But, oh, yeah. but don't <laughs> burn yourself by eating it too quickly. No rush. No rushing. No rushing. Anna, you can't get more bonus points by telling us that Gareth Gates came second. <laughs> <laughs> You've already won the virtual stuff. Stop. Pepper. <laughs> don't rush, Anna, that's fine. I can read it if you like. No, no. Uh, just a warning. <laughs> when you bring it out of the oven, the peppers, they're the sort of vegetables that retain a lot of heat. <laughs> so the, the, the filling might actually cool down, but the pepper is still really, really hot. <laughs> so that's just a warning for when you start to so eat it. Five minutes, leave it to rest for yeah. five minutes. Come back within half time to leave it for five minutes. That's yeah. why. So yeah. Five minutes, so it's yeah. fine. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so next week we've got a really exciting program. Um, Regan uh, will be speech. She runs the uh, macula and the glaucoma groups, and um, she's coming along to speak next week about I have for 30 minutes. Approximately. Uh, approximately 30 minutes. And that's between 4 p.m. and 4.30. And it's quite a coincidence that it will be National Eye Health Week. Now she's gonna be doing a much more practical session than some of the eye sort of care health sessions we've had. So she's not gonna be going into the real sort of medical stuff like um, some of the opticians did for us. So she's going to be covering the following. She's going to cover eye health, nutrition, and protecting your eyes. So it's going to be a lot more sort of practical stuff than mm -hmm. perhaps has, has been done in the past. But it should still be very, very good and helpful. It's just looking at eye health from different angles. So that's next week. Um, so we're going to say goodbye now. Oh, we've got to leave you all. We've really enjoyed being with you. We have. So it's been lovely present. It's been lovely having uh, the team here doing it. Thanks again to Aisha for her yeah. cooking that wonderful pepper. And thanks very much to Charlotte. Um, as I say, Charlotte's with us for a little while. And she's yeah. staying to the end of September with us. Thank you. Helping us out. So I'm going to say a goodbye now. Bye. 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 That's bye from all of us as well. Bye.